Welcome to Prescriptive Duct Seal Certification Training. In Module 4, we will cover the specifics of manufactured home duct sealing. Topics we'll be covering in this module include the basics of mobile home heating systems, the basics of a mobile home duct system, how to build an end sweep, and sealing plenums from above and below the floor level, and how to make the best crossover repairs. Manufactured homes are built in a factory, as the name suggests. Each section is called a floor. A single wide has one floor, a double wide has two floors, and a triple wide has three floors. If it has two or three floors, this necessitates a crossover duct connecting the parts. Generally, the part that contains the furnace is considered side A. The part that does not have the furnace is part B. Manufactured floor types come in two varieties. One is when the joist for the system runs the lengthwise of the manufactured home. When this is the case, the ducts will be right up against the floor. Many builders build it with crosswise ducts. That means the joists run from side to side. The ducts will lie beneath the joist level, and that's what creates what is often referred to as the belly. When this is the case, there'll be a transition piece from the floor to the top of the manufactured home plenum. Manufactured home duct systems have a lot of similarity from house to house to house. However, they are quite different than site-built duct systems. Once you've done a dozen or two, you'll have most of the common duct systems down and you'll find that the work becomes fairly standard. Oftentimes the duct work itself is covered by the road barrier. If it's not there, it's probably because the road barrier has been destroyed over the years. Because this road barrier stops us from doing direct physical observation of the duct system, we need to check for damage from the inside of the duct by removing the registers and either using a mirror and a flashlight or a digital camera to take pictures. Manufactured home duct systems contain the following parts. One is the air handler or the furnace itself. That's usually in a closet. Two is the furnace to plenum connection, which is a very critical part to see. Three is the length of the duct that runs the entire length of the manufactured home and it's referred to as the plenum. You'll see boots coming out and registers in those boots. Occasionally you'll see interior ducts that run to a register that is offset from the main plenum. Here we see a crossover that's going from side A to side B. This is another view of a manufactured home duct system. Here again, we have the furnace would sit right here. Here is the furnace to plenum connection. Here we have the furnace itself, a boot, and a register. And occasionally there is branch ducts, but not very often. These end caps can often be non-existent, rolled up like toothpaste, or otherwise put together in a very leaky fashion. We'll show you later how to make an end cap to terminate that leakage. In manufactured homes with crosswise floor joists, what you'll find is the duct not in contact with the floor. That's what gives us sort of the belly look when we're underneath. So if we need to do work on that plan, we realize we have to cut through the road barrier, find our way through the insulation, and expose the joint that we're trying to seal. This is why it's so critical to do a good visual inspection before you start cutting. You want to make sure that you're making that cut into the road barrier in the, and the insulation in the exact spot that you want to. While the road barrier prohibits our direct visual observation of the duct system from underneath the manufactured home, use of a mirror and a flashlight, a digital camera, or even your phone can tell you where the major leaks are in it. Just take photographs of down and up each direction from a few boots and it can reveal a lot. Here we see using this mirror there's a big leak between the boot connected to the plenum. Oftentimes in manufactured homes you'll find that the boots are actually no longer connected to the subfloor. We can reconnect those boots to the subfloor and at the same time seal the boot to plenum connection all from above without getting underneath the house. When we find gaps that are bigger than a quarter inch wide, it is best practice to cover it with mesh tape before applying the mastic. Mastic can easily cover holes less than one quarter of an inch, but above that, they need a little structural integrity. This is self-adhesive sheetrock tape. You just kind of clean off the area to make sure the tape sticks, apply the tape in short pieces, 
and then apply the mastic. You can also cover it with sheet metal if you'd like to. Mirrors give us the ability to not only sort of scope out the duct system, but also to check our work. Before applying the mastic, it's best to stick the mirror back down that register and make sure that we haven't missed any gaps before applying mastic. In this case, what we see is we see a gap that we do not have covered with the self-adhesive sheetrock tape and not ready to be mastic. So it is always good practice to check your work before actually applying the mastic. In this picture, we show a house that has a longitudinal floor system and hence a longitudinal duct system. You can see there is no transition piece between the floor and the top of the plenum. In this case, the plenum itself is pulled away from the subfloor. It is necessary to attach either the roofing nails or screws by some, or some other means to reattach that duct that it became disconnected from the floor. One way of fixing this connection is to get about a two to two and a half inch piece of sheet metal cut about 14 inches wide and then using the bending tool to make a 90 degree angle. The next slide will show you how to apply that 90 degree angle to make a secure connection between the ductwork and the subfloor. The L of the piece that you just created fits onto the top of the plenum where you can bend it back from the floor and secure it tight with a few screws. We recommend three screws. And then you connect the top piece to the subfloor. This picture illustrates the use of a sheet metal hammer, hammering in a half inch flathead roofing nail. The advantage of the roofing nail is the head is quite thin, so the register will fit back in, and the width of the head gives you good contact to hold that register in place. Any remaining holes can be covered with mesh tape and mastic applied. It's important to make sure you get mastic on all the holes, gaps, and seams. To summarize the first part of this module, manufactured home duct systems always include rectangular plenums. On double wides, you'll have two. On single wides, you'll have one. And of course, triple wides, you can have three. Oftentimes, you'll find that the crossover has issues, rodent problems, dog problems, or gravity just taking back a bad connection. Always check your work. You can do this with cameras from the inside of the duct systems and make sure you seal all takeoffs and registers. Now we're going to talk about building an end sweep. An end sweep goes at the last register between the end of the ductwork and the end of the manufactured home. This is a technique to seal off, which is oftentimes a very bad terminus connection made at the factory. Topics we'll be covering on how to build an end sweep include how to identify where to put the end sweep, cutting the sheet metal, or Aluminum valley flashing often works um, a whole lot better and is easier to work with. How to fasten that sheet metal or aluminum valley flashing to the existing ductwork and sealing the end sweep so that no air leaks out when under pressure. This picture shows what a typical end cap looks like from the factory. As you can see, whatever duct tape was on it has fallen apart. No screws were ever put into it. And that air is just going to go straight out here and straight out there. And basically, a lot of that paid for hot air will just be going to heat um, underneath the manufactured home. Our goal is to stop that. If you wanted to, you could go underneath the home, find exactly where it is, and patch it that way. We're going to show you a way that you block the duct past the last register with a sheet metal sweep or duct board and then seal it with mastic. This photograph shows leakage around a faulty factory end sweep. It's better than the last picture we showed, but still lots of opportunity for leakage. Sealing those end sweeps are a good source of leakage reduction. In this case, we'll be building an end sweep from aluminum valley flashing. It is lightweight, easy to cut, and less expensive than sheet metal. Here we're going to show a cut piece of sheet metal that will tightly block the duct after the last register. It's important to make sure it's the last register. If it's not the last register, you will cut the airflow off to whatever the last register is, resulting in a callback because the customer is uncomfortable. You begin by cutting a piece of sheet metal that is one quarter inch longer on all sides than the inside dimensions of the duct, then cut quarter inch notches out of the corners of the sheet metal. Now place the sweep into the section of duct. Make sure the back is towards the end of the mobile home, otherwise you'll be deflecting the air in the wrong direction, and use sheet metal screws to fasten the sheet metal to the ductwork. 
as an alternative to using sheet metal end sweeps or valley flashing end sweeps, you can get duckboard. Duckboard is a form of ductwork that has an aluminum face on one side. Make sure you put that aluminum face towards the ductwork. That is the air barrier. If you make a pumpkin cut, and by pumpkin cut, I mean how you would cut the top out of a jack-o'-lantern, you have a slight diagonal so the top of the pumpkin cannot fall into the pumpkin. And in this case, the duckboard cannot push back into the end of the duct system. Make sure the foil is facing you or towards where the air is coming from, and then apply mastic liberally. To summarize what we just covered, folded metal at the end of the ductwork is often quite leaky. We can get past that or fix that by using a sheet metal sweep at the end or using ductboard. If you're using sheet metal or aluminum valley flashing, make sure you use sheet metal screws to fasten the ductwork to the existing suck system. And of course, when we're finished, we're going to seal every joint and every potential leak with a liberal coating of mastic. The next section will focus on sealing the furnace to plenum connection. This is a critical connection to seal. It is the highest pressure in the duct system and the hottest air in winter and the coolest air in summer. The section will highlight how to seal the furnace from above if your licenses permit you to do such and sealing the furnace to plenum from below. If your professional licenses allow you, you can unplug the furnace fan and in many cases, you have to disconnect the heating elements also. If your license does not allow you to do this, then certainly don't do it. But if you are allowed to do that, you can take out the fan, disconnect the, the heating elements, and voila, you have access to the furnace to plenum connection, as well as in this case, because the crossover is directly beneath the furnace, the start of the crossover takeoff. As the picture shows, there's some large gaps all around this area. To cover the gaps, you could have used self-adhesive sheetrock taper. In this case, we cut small pieces of aluminum valley flashing to make the patch and make the patch stronger. On the smaller parts of the gap, we're not using metal patches. We are using that self-adhesive sheetrock tape that we mentioned before. That gives you a nice, strong underlying fabric that the mastic can adhere to, and essentially you're making a cast. From this one connection we were able to seal the furnace to plenum connection as well as the top part of the crossover takeoff. As you can see the mastic was liberally applied. There's no air that's going to leak out of this after this job. If your licenses do not allow you to pull furnace fans and disconnect the heating strips in a safe way, you'll be required to go underneath the house to get the furnace to plenum connection. This is a case where it's really important to know exactly where you are underneath that home. You know, the old adage of measure twice and cut once. You have to cut back the road barrier to expose this joint. We'll be showing how to fix that road barrier at a later point. What you do is you can make a pilot hole in the plenum using a sharp object. In this case, we're using an old dull duck knife. Make sure that you're cutting directly below the furnace. It can be really depressing to cut the hole in the wrong place. Next, we get our shears or our snips out to cut a hole large enough to allow access into the interior of the plenum. Before doing this, make sure you lock out, tag out the electric breakers that serve the furnace. Once we have access, there's all sorts of work to be done. As you can see, the tabs from the original furnace to plenum connector were never folded over. Simply fold those tabs over. Before putting your hands into that hole, it is best practice to take some duct tape and go around the edges, overlap them, so there's no sharp edges before you stick your arm in there, potentially exposing yourself to a sheet metal cut. Once again, cover any big gaps with small pieces of sheet metal or self-adhesive sheet rock tape and apply lots and lots of mastic. You've made the hole. There's no excuse not to get everything you can reach. Well, you have access to directly beneath the furnace. You might as well reach up and seal the seam on the plenum itself. You will not be able to seal the entire length of the plenum, but in this case, you might as well. You're there. It's the highest pressure and the highest temperature in the system. Uh, we chose to take pictures of this job because, well, it had no road barrier. Obviously, in the homes that you're working in, it will not be laid bare like this, but it is good for illustrative purposes. Now, what we're going to do is show you how to make a patch. 
Once again, we're going to apply a nice liberal thick as a nickel coat of mastic all around the opening. In this case, we're using 14 inch wide aluminum valley flashing and we boilerplate it to the hole, making sure that you cover uh, the edges of the hole at least by an inch on all sides. And just to really make sure that we have no leakage from the patch that we made, we're going to coat the outside of that patch with a nice thick layer of mastic also. If you make an access hole in the road barrier to get to the furnace to plenum connection, it is your responsibility to patch the hole in the road barrier. The program does not require that you fix every hole and rip in the road barrier, only the ones that you created. In this case, we are going to use Tyvek. Any kind of solid uh, fabric can work for you. And we're going to attach it to the road barrier using a stitch stapler. As covered in a previous module, a stitch stapler is rather than driving the staples straight in is used to stitch two pieces of fabric together by folding the ends of the staple over. Let's summarize the work that we just talked about on sealing that air handler to furnace connection. It is perhaps the biggest hole. It sees the highest pressure at the highest temperature. This is the hole that if you fix correctly will save the homeowner the most money. Depending on your professional license, you can address it from above or below the floor line. Sometimes you get a twofer, you can seal the top of the crossover connection from above. If sealing from below, make sure you make a good solid boilerplate patch on the hole that you made in the ductwork and cover the hole in the road barrier in an appropriate manner. Our next section will cover crossover repairs. Crossovers are on double wides and triple wides. They're the section of duct that conveys the conditioned air from the furnace, usually side A, to side B, that part of the floor that just has ductwork and no furnace. Topics we'll be covering include removing the crossover and sealing all accessible connections, securing that ductwork, how to seal those crossover connections, attaching the inner and outer liner using tensioning ties, and supporting the ductwork. As mentioned earlier, the job of the crossover duct is to connect two sides of a double wide manufactured home. In order to do this according to spec, we're going to be removing the existing duct system and make sure that we seal around all takeoffs. Many times, rather than fixing that crossover, you should just replace it. It's often easier than trying to patch together an old falling apart uh, crossover duct. Sometimes you get a twofer if that crossover connection is directly underneath the furnace. Sometimes it's possible to seal it from above. And sometimes you can seal it from below just by dropping the crossover and giving you access to that furnace to plenum connection. As always, make sure you lock out and tag out the breaker serving the electric furnace. This is a takeoff from a plenum for a crossover duct. As you can see, the crossover has been removed for this picture. You need to make sure you have the cleanest working site that you can for a tight seal. Uh, this picture is a worm's eye view looking up through that crossover takeoff. As you can see, the tabs have never been folded over. You can simply reach up there and fold those tabs over and make sure you apply lots of mastic there. Here we see all the tabs. In many cases, this crossover connection has never been securely attached to the plenum. It is often possible from underneath to drive a few screws through the plenum itself into those tabs that should be bent over that you recently bent over. We suggest at least four screws to make sure you got a good connection. Here we see that there's a seam in the actual crossover connection. While you're at it, you might as well apply a good gooping of mastic right there to avoid any leakage at that spot. The next step is to slip, and that's an easy word to say. This is not easy while laying on your back in a tight crawl space, we know. But pull the inner liner of the flex up around the connector coming down from above. You should at least get it two loops of inner wire above the connecting point. Get your tension tie ready, put it around the inner liner, hand tighten it, and then of course get that tensioning tie gun out to tighten the uh, tension strap and also use it to cut off any excess strap. Next, get your tension ties out again and slip it around the outer liner and pull that outer liner up around the inner liner and the connector. 
And of course, we are going to use our tensioner tool to get that tension tie good and tight and also to snip off the excess strap when we're finished tightening it. It is important to try to keep that flex duct off the ground, especially if there is no ground cover. Weak axes in the soil can eat away at the outer liner, and then the fiberglass can wick any moisture of the soil up into the insulation, deteriorating the flex duct over time. Oftentimes, you'll find blocks already doing that job on the existing crossover. If not, and if it's really tight, you can't get straps on it. Closed cell foam boards can usually be slid underneath the flex duct to prevent that flex duct to earth connection. Let's summarize what we've learned about crossover connections. All crossovers need to be inspected, even if they look good. And you have to have new tension ties installed in the inner and the outer liner. You have to use a tensioning tool for that tension tie. Otherwise, you will not get it tight enough. The crossover cannot be in contact with the ground. Sometimes closed cell foam is your best tool to prevent that from happening. The good news, we do not require mastic between the inner liner and the crossover takeoff. That'll help keep the job a little bit cleaner. And when that mastic's still wet, all it does is make pulling that inner liner up and it's keeping it up there uh, even more difficult. Finally, I would just like to say carpe seal. We know that the work you do is important and hard work.